What's stronger? Blue PLA or red PLA from the same manufacturer? If you think that this is a stupid question, and of course they are similarly strong, then sit tight for an interesting video. I printed over 100 samples in 10 different PLA colors and tested them for their strength and also how much they warped during annealing. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Easily create the website you've always wanted or replace your old one you've always hated. Save 10% by visiting squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen. Years ago, I was at an injection molding company discussing a part with very tight tolerances, where the owner told me how different their material shrinkage was depending on the color that they use, and that blue was the worst. Ever since that day, I wondered if this is the same with 3D printing filament. Does its color affect the performance of our parts? Most of you will know that there are a ton of parameters that influence the strength of our 3D prints. More infill and parameters, stronger parts. Higher extrusion temperatures make better layer adhesion, yet worse quality. And of course, the market of different types of filament is huge. There is PLA, PETG, nylon, ABS and even sub-variants like PLA+, that modify the way a material is printable and how strong it is. Yet, have you ever considered if the color of your filament you purchase could have an influence on how strong your parts actually are? So, when filament manufacturers make their material, they usually buy uncolored resin pellets in bulk and then mix them in the extruder itself with a small amount of pigment in the form of a so-called master batch. The master batch are pellets that consist of highly concentrated pigments, particles, fillers and other additives that then get dispersed into the molten polymer. These color the filament and even give it a unique look like a silk finish, glitter or matte appearance. The component Components responsible for color can range from organic to inorganic pigments to carbon for black and titanium dioxide for white. Depending on what's added, the process will also change the properties of the final material. Yet, if we even find a mechanical datasheet for a filament, the properties that are stated are usually generalized and do not specify a color. But there are differences. For my part, I always try to stay away from matte and silk materials because I often had problems with material flow, proper layer adhesion and quality. Other than that, I'm honest here, I usually assumed that the differences are negligible and never chose a certain color of filament for a project or a strength test because I thought it performed better or worse. A couple of years ago, I read the first publication on the impact of PLA color on material properties. And just recently, another paper was released that did a similar investigation for PLA and ABS. Both showed a clear influence of color on strength, stiffness, impact resistance and ductility, ranging up to 30% differences in properties depending on the material color. Since I don't fully agree with the methods they applied and of course because I also was wondering the same for a while, I finally performed my own proper investigation. For that I purchased 10 different PLA filament colors from the German filament manufacturer Das Filament. I talked to them making sure that they always used the same type of pellets and that the only difference between the samples was the used master batch. I got natural PLA without any pigments, then the typical black and white colors as well as a matte black variant. Then I got a regular blue and also a translucent blue. The only other specialty filament I got was silver. The rest were standard red, green and yellow. My results will of course not be universally applicable for any other manufacturer because they probably use different master batches and even base resins but will give us an idea if color is something to worry about or not. But what's your experience with different colored filaments? Have you ever noticed a difference? Leave a comment down below. The samples that I chose to print were tensile specimens to test material strength and layer adhesion. Everything with a 0.4mm nozzle at 0.2mm layer height. The horizontal ones used 5 parameters, so all the extrusion in the test sections are aligned with the load. The standing ones used 1 parameter and 100% infill. Then I of course printed a test hook for each of the materials. 
which is not only a more realistic part, but is also loaded with tension and bending and will tell us a lot about the general material performance. This one had 3 parameters and 30% cubic infill, which is a setting I use for many mechanically loaded parts. I also printed 3 impact test specimens with 8 parameters and 100% infill that will give us an idea of how tough a material is when it's loaded quickly. And finally I printed a banshee to see if we have differences in printing quality as well as an annealing test part. This part will be annealed in an oven at 100 degrees celsius after printing because I was really curious if colors make a difference in the amount of deformation we get. The parts were printed in a sequential order so every group by itself making sure that layer times and cooling was very consistent. Well, until I had everything set up, because I noticed that the print head of my Waron 2.4 was bigger than I expected, knocking parts off and resulting in layer shifts and failures in my first prints. Since I usually treat filament colors, especially from the same suppliers interchangeable, I used exactly the same G-code for all 10 prints. I printed the PLA at around 204 degrees nozzle, 60% cooling and 60 degrees bed temperature with open doors, so at around room temperature on my Voron 2.4. Some will argue that they tune every color of the filament, but in my opinion that would defeat the purpose of this investigation in finding out how interchangeable different colors are. The general quality of the parts was very nice as you would expect when working with PLA. The only notable thing there was that the white filament hugely amplified inconsistencies in the print, which is also the reason why I rarely print in white. So let's get to the interesting part, the mechanical tests. But before that, the new year has started and you probably have already dropped most of your new year's resolutions. Yet, if one of your goals this year was to finally have a professional website or replace the old one you've always hated, then head over to today's video sponsor Squarespace. Use my link squarespace.com slash cnckitchen and find out how easy creating your own website is. Squarespace has been a channel sponsor for years due to a simple reason. I love using it myself for my own website. Creating and maintaining a beautiful web presence using Squarespace is quick, simple and intuitive. So making one even without prior knowledge is super simple. It doesn't matter if you're an artist, a maker or a business. Squarespace has beautiful templates for everyone that you can customize to your needs. You can add a blog to share your stories and designs, generate revenue with an online store, collect donations or even create a members only area. And all of this is easy to set up and to maintain, so you don't have to waste your precious time. Try it out totally for free by visiting squarespace.com slash cnckitchen. And when you're ready to launch, use code cnckitchen to get 10% off your first website or domain purchase. And if you're still getting stuck, then check out their help center, which is one of the best I have ever used. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So we've got our tensile samples, our hooks, the notched impact samples and finally the annealing test. I first started with the horizontal tensile samples, which I put one after the other into my DIY universal test machine and loaded them at a constant speed until they failed. I'll start with the weakest color and walk my way up to the strongest one. Matte black was almost as expected the worst and failed on average at 60 megapascals. Green came next at 62 megapascals and the yellow sample failed on average at 63 megapascals. Regular black was a bit stronger and ultimately failed at 64 megapascals. Red, silver, blue and the natural filament all were able to bear around 65 megapascals until they broke. The white and clear material were the strongest and failed at 68 megapascals which is 15% stronger than the worst color, matte black. Yet strength isn't everything, some materials yield quite a bit after their load limit is reached, while others just break apart after reaching that point, making them quite unpredictable. Even though I don't have a relax tensometer on my test machine, we can still take a rough look at how ductile a material is, so how much it yields before it fails by checking how long it survives after reaching the maximum load. The red material was the most brittle. Then came all of the other materials and matte black as well as yellow were the most ductile ones, yielding over 400% more than the red material. 
I would have expected that more ductile materials were weaker, but besides the matte black material that was weak but yielded significantly, there wasn't a clear correlation observable. With the lying samples, we have already seen that filament color really makes a significant difference, but what about the very critical layer adhesion of our 3D printed parts? So I again tested three samples for each of the colors that were printed standing. The silver parts had the worst layer adhesion with only 31 megapascals, which is just half of the strength of the lying specimens. Next came, as expected, matte black with 32 megapascals. Clear blue wasn't that much better and only held 35 megapascals. Yellow and grass green came next, both at 38 megapascals, which is already 60% of the reference strength. Blue, natural and black were able to bear 40, 41 and 42 megapascals and the white and red samples had the best layer adhesion at 45 and 46 megapascals, reaching around 70% of the reference strength, which is quite good. Let's next take a look at the impact performance of the different colored PLA. I didn't expect a lot because PLA is pretty well known for not being very tough on impact, but maybe we can see a significant difference. The setup is quite simple. The notch samples are held in a vise at the bottom of the machine. Then a hammer with a known energy strikes the sample. The tougher a material, the more of the energy of the hammer it will absorb and the less far it will swing upwards, which is tracked by the drag dial. Reds, clear blue, blue, black, white, natural and green all behaved very similar, with an average impact strength of 5 kJ per square meter. The yellow and matte black samples were around 40% tougher than the worst samples with around 6.5 kJ per square meter impact strength. Silver stood significantly out and was twice as strong as the first samples and reached 9 kJ per square meter, which is a significant difference. So even though layer adhesion wasn't stellar, silver can take a beating. We have already seen that color can make a significant difference in individual properties, but does that really make a big difference on a more realistic part where axial strength, layer adhesion and ductility are important in their combination and this is what I wanted to show with my test hook samples. Almost as expected, the matte black hook was the weakest, breaking at only 72 kilograms of load. Next came the yellow sample that snapped at 77 kilograms. Silver was a bit stronger, failing at 79 kilograms. Natural green, white, black and blue were almost similarly strong, breaking between 80 and 81 kilograms. The red sample was able to bear 15% more load than the worst hook failing at 82 kilograms and blue was the strongest, failing at a whopping 83 kilograms and therefore being 17% stronger than the matte black part. If we compare these values with the results from the tensile test, we can see that they correlate quite well and probably differ because layer adhesion and shear resistance play a more important role on the hook. Let's finally take a look at annealing suitability of different colors. To anneal PLA, you put your part in a 100 degree Celsius oven for half an hour and then let them cool down slowly. This increases the crystallinity of the material and especially improves the heat resistance of PLA from around 60 degrees Celsius to over 170 degrees Celsius. This sounds great! But it comes with a huge problem that parts usually warp horribly, making them almost unusable after the process. Even though there are special types of PLA with less of that tendency, I wondered if the used pigment also plays a role. I measured all of the samples before annealing, aligned them on a baking sheet and cooked them. I was able to easily spot that all samples deformed dramatically, yet that there seemed to be differences. In the past I thought that warping from annealing comes due to a density change during crystallization, but I'm quite sure now that this was total bullshit. I now think that the deformation is a result of the trapped stresses from printing. The molten material gets squished in C when it gets laid down and stretched within the printing plane because it gets bonded onto the previous layer. These internal stresses are released when you heat up the part so that they contract in X and Y but expand in Z, which is exactly what we see on our test samples. But the differences in results were way bigger than I thought. Silver, white and clear blue only deformed by 4 to 7%. All other colors deformed by 10% or more. The natural sample was the worst, warping by 19% in the Z direction. So if you consider annealing your PLA parts, maybe try out different colors and see how your results change. Printing slowly also helps, but that's a topic for another video. So these were the results. 
Does the color of your 3D printing filament impact the strength of your parts? Yes, it does. Is it significant? Kind of. The test showed that especially the specialty filament with a matte finish showed significantly less strength on average. The rest of the results are kind of comparable, yet still with differences in properties of up to 400%. It's hard to find an overall winner, because some of the properties contradict each other. Clear blue has the highest tensile strength, yet shows one of the worst layer adhesions. The red material had great layer adhesion, but was very brittle, and so on. Of course, my samples were just from one manufacturer with a limited range of colors. But since these results already vary in only the tensile properties up to 50%, there will be even more significant differences between different brands of material, even though all say PLA on the package. The results were really interesting and reminded me to be more careful when comparing the properties of materials in the future. The takeaway for you should be that if you have problems with a material, maybe just try out a different color or brand, because even within one polymer, there can be huge differences. And when it comes to the mechanical properties of your parts, maybe stay away from specialty colors or finishes if they aren't necessary for your project. But what are your thoughts on these results? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching everyone! I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also, check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye! <coughs> Even though I don't have a real extensometer... Extensometer... Extens...